Do you need gigabit internet? In this video, I'm hoping to be able to help you make a more informed decision as to whether or not gigabit internet is what you actually need. So in order to understand that, we have to break it down into six different categories. We're going to be looking at bandwidth versus speed, megabits per second, because that is what internet packages are measured in. Third, we'll have a look at what is your current internet speed and how to determine it. Then we'll look at any hardware limitations on your network. We'll have a look at upload versus download speed requirements. And last but not least, we'll take into consideration some real world examples to help you better understand this particular question. Hey, it's Steve here, helping you make sense of your computer. If you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button down below and all the links to anything mentioned in this video will be in the description box below. So please be sure to check that out. And if you like this video, smash that like button for us. The first thing we are going to look at is bandwidth versus speed. And a lot of people use the terms interchangeably, but they are not the same thing. To understand, if megabits per second were equated with a one lane highway and you try to download one five megabyte file it'll take about five seconds to download it. Change the highway to five lanes, and that same download will take about one second. The internet is not any faster. The data is just received quicker because you have larger bandwidth. The basic measurement of electronic information is a bit, which is either a one or a zero, and this is the basis of the binary code that makes computers work. It takes eight bits to make up one byte or one character. That is also why one kilobyte of data is 1024 bytes or two to the power of 10. From a kilobyte, we move up to the megabyte, which is 1024 kilobytes or 1,047,576 characters. Then a gigabyte, terabyte, petabyte, exabyte, zettabyte, yottabyte, and the new brontobyte. Now just for comparison, a yottabyte is 45 trillion 35,996,273,704 gigabyte Blu-ray discs. You know now why storage is measured in bytes, or more commonly, megabytes. But not all providers or all manufacturers play nice. A lot of them measure things in megabits because it's easier to sell. Let's have a look at your internet connection package as an example. If you have an internet package that is measured at 100 megabits per second, more people are inclined to purchase that because it sounds so much better than if you were to say 12.5 megabytes per second. Because if you had 100 megabits on your internet connection, the 12.5 megabytes is exactly how much data you could transfer in one second. This is without taking into consideration latency, protocol overhead, other network traffic on the same network. It is also why a lot of internet providers want you to upgrade to gigabit because it then clears up the connection for other users on the same network. Gigabit Ethernet allows you to transfer up to a maximum of 125 megabytes per second or you can transfer one gigabyte of data in about eight seconds. So where do we start? In order to understand this, you need to know what your current internet speed is. So let's open up a web browser and in the address bar, let's type in www.speedtest.net. Run a check on your connection. A critical part of this that most people overlook is that you need to know who your ISP is and where that initial hop is to get an accurate measurement. You can run a, what's called a trace route or spelled T-R-A-C-E-R-T -E from a command prompt. And that will determine the initial points of contact to your ISP. The initial point of contact would be the server that you type into the box or select from the box so that you can get a true measurement on your speed. When I go into a customer's business or home, the one thing I generally look at now is the hardware, especially if customers are complaining about speed issues. You need to check from your computer all the way through to your cable modem or your ADSL modem. Every cable needs to be checked. For example, this particular cable any cable that you have, just take it, have a look at it, and it's got some writing on it. This particular one says it's CAT5. CAT5 cable is rated at maximum throughput of 100 megabits per second. So if you have a gigabit uh, internet connection, 
This cable is going to bottleneck your system and your data will only go as fast as your slowest point, which in this case is this cable. So really, this is no good. What you want to do is check your cables and have Cat5e. Cat5e is rated at gigabit speed or 1000 megabits per second. This particular one that I use in my network is actually Cat6 cable. Cat6 cable is rated at 10 gigabits per second. So this is definitely the, the cable that you'd want if you have a high speed internal network. From there, check every device between your computer and your ADSL modem. So by device, I mean have a look for switches. A switch is the little box that you'll have where a cable plugs into it and then multiple cables branch out. It takes one connection, breaks it into five or more connections. Check those switches. If it says 10 slash 100, that's a bottleneck. You're not going to get your gigabit speeds. Replace it with a gigabit switch. Check your router if you have one. Older routers, which a lot of people still have, are only rated for 100 megabit per second. You are not going to get the true throughput that you're paying for. So take your hardware into consideration, get all those issues internally out of the way, then you can benefit from gigabit ethernet. Upload speed versus download speed. Is there a difference? Most definitely yes. Most internet providers, when you have a look at the package, you'll find out that your download speed is rated way, way higher than your upload speed. For example, the average user, if you're looking at email, looking at Facebook, if you're downloading a movie, these are all things that you're downloading data from the internet to your computer, so you need a faster connection. If you have security cameras on premises, that requires upload bandwidth. If you're backing up your computer to the internet, that is upload speed. If you're posting videos to YouTube or you're having live conferences or use voice over IP phones, you need better upload speed. Now, if you have a low upload speed and you have all of these services, there is your bottleneck right there and you're going to have problems with your internet. Let's have a look at this in a real world environment. A gamer, as an example, needs a, about a 10 megabit per second connection, but more importantly, they need lower latency. What is latency? Well, latency is the time it takes a signal to make a round trip from your computer to the destination computer or server and then back again. A ping rate, if you had to ping that server, is a test of your latency measured in milliseconds. So if you are playing an online game against somebody and their latency or their ping is 5 milliseconds and yours is 150 milliseconds, you might think that they are cheating because they responded so much faster than what you did. Basic web browsing needs about a 1, point, a 1 to 1.5 megabit per second connection. If you're watching a standard definition movie, which is 480p, you need about 1 to 3 megabits per second. If you are watching a high definition movie, which is 1080p, and that's the majority of the movies that companies like Amazon, Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, and all of them provide, that movie requires approximately 5 to 10 megabits per second. The new format of movies, 4K movies, much higher resolution, this is your 2160p movies. These require anywhere from 25 to 45 megabit per second connection. Video chatting needs about 1.5 megabits per second upload and about an 8 megabit per second download speed. Watching a high definition YouTube video requires roughly 4 four or so megabits per second download, but if you're uploading a high definition movie, you're anywhere from about five to 25 megabits per second. Now that you understand those, have a look at everything else you have. If you have security cameras, depending on the resolution that you're recording at, the average is roughly around two and a half megabit per second upload. So if you have two cameras, that's five megabits per second upload. Now all of these facts together, all of these figures, that's per one person. So if you have multiple people in the household, such as the number of kids playing online games, you have to calculate what each of them require. Put it together in a spreadsheet or something, compare the upload and the download, and make sure you get a package that meets your needs. Because once you compile a list of everything you're actually doing, you'll be closer to a true representation of what you need for an internet package. And then you'll be able to answer the question, 
is gigabit ethernet or is gigabit internet connection really necessary for you? Should you be paying a premium for that service? Do you really need it? Last in this, I want to mention is one thing that a lot of people also overlook. A lot of internet service providers read the fine print because in the fine print somewhere, it's going to say there's a data cap. So you can only download say 30 gigabytes or 100 or whatever the case is. If the limit's 30 gigabytes, that equates to about 10 hours of ultra high definition movies that you can download. And really in a month, that's just not enough. So make sure data caps are not a limitation on your network. Hopefully, now that you've watched this video and you've taken all these factors into consideration, you will know whether or not gigabit internet is for you. It's not necessary to always get the biggest, the best, if you're not gonna be using it. So above all, have a great day and thanks for watching this video.